Now, the obvious question is why recycle? I mean, chemical process recycle. No. The important thing, we're not seeing this right now, but for chemical reactions to increase conversion, you need to recycle. So if you have a conversion XA, you have, I don't know, 10%, you will just simply recycle that, maybe it will react to 20%, who knows? So that's why they do it. Sometimes they need to recover a catalyst, which means money, because catalysts in general are expensive. So they prefer to recycle and reuse it rather than just throw it away. Also, there are many, many processes in which you need to dilute the process stream. You know, a stream is so strong, I don't know, if you have sulfuric acid, it's at, I don't know, 98% and you want, or your pipeline just accept 20%. You got to dilute that, so you're going to recycle, which means you're going to increase the flow and decrease the composition. Normally, also, and this is very typical. I didn't knew it before because I didn't care that much. But once you're in a chemical plant, you're controlling reactor, you're controlling, I don't know, many processes. You are always expecting that temperature, pressure, levels are the same. If they are not the same, it means something is wrong. And why is something wrong? I don't know. But the control process will help us. And how do we do that? Normally you do a recycle to, I don't know, this is a huge recycle compared to this stream. So the temperature of this is, I don't know, 500. And the temperature of this is, I don't know, 100. You will, because this is too big, because this is too big, this current will not make nothing. It will. This current will laugh. Like, oh, you're so small. My temperature will stay the same. So that's one example. And finally, the recirculation of a working fluid. Sometimes refrigeration. You will need refrigerant. And in plant generation or uh, generationary plant, you need steam. Steam or water will be always flowing in the process. Now, bypass is a little bit difficult to explain. It will increase properties of the product by adding raw material, like the juice I told you before. You add good flavor. The operation unit does not work as desired. You have this unit, but I don't know. You want to top max. So you are top. You, I don't know. You maybe the max is 100 kilos per hour and you have 120. Well, if you put those 20 in here, you will have, of course, spill. The fluid will spill and you will destroy the tower and a lot of security hazards, etc. So what you're going to do probably is to take it here and maybe eventually make it flow or send it to another one. And once again, process control variables. I don't know, maybe you want a different composition plus you want another temperature or pressure, so that's why you send this current or stream here. So nice. Let's see an example. This is kind of large. 4500 kilograms per hour of a solution of K, let's call this K, by mass is joined by a recycled stream of 36% of K. Nice. The combined stream is fed into an evaporator. The concentrated stream leaving the evaporator contains, okay, we have another one, okay. This steam is feeding, is fed into the crystallizer, okay, we have a crystallizer, which is cool, causing crystals to come out of the solution. Crystals mean solids, so guys, we're going to work with solids, take care. And then the mass, the crystal account, oh, there, oh this is super important, the crystals count 95% of the total of the filter cake. What's a filter cake? Filter cake is simply the solid part of the filtration. The solution that passes through the filter is also okay. another concentration of K to the recycle. Of course, they need to be the same because it's the same product. Nice. Now, we're going to calculate the rate of evaporation the rate of production of K, of K solid, the feed rates of the evaporator and crystallizer must be blah, 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 blah. Okay, now we need the recycle ratio. 
which is exactly the mass of recycle divided by the mass of fresh feed. Good. And suppose there was no recycle. Okay, we're going to see what happens when we do not recycle. Nice. Let's do it. What are we going to see? Let me show you the diagram. Once again, we're going to feed K, which has 33% percentage. The other one is water. We're going to mix it with the recirculation fluid. And then we have this feed. I put E just to know it's the en entrance to the evaporator. It has a composition, I don't know and a composition, I don't know, of K and water. So that's why I use these variables. Evaporator means that I am going to take out water. Nice. Now, the feed in the crystallizer, that's why I put the C here, we know it, it's data, so that's nice. And they tell you PC, I will be calling the solid crystals, and PS is the non-solid solution. The crystallizer will have some product here before, as you can see, of course it's the same composition because it's the same solution. The only thing is that we're going to recirculate this one and we are not going to recycle this one. And besides the tell you note one, 95% of the mass of the cake is sent here. Good. So now we got to calculate Q, P, F, F, E, F, C and the relationship. Good. Let's do a mass balance from node 1. Remember that PD is essentially just the addition of these two guys. So PD is equal to 5% of PC plus PD. PC could be this is like a liquid and this is the solid, etc. And you find a relationship between PD and PC. I just write it down. You cannot solve it further, but just to let you know, PS equals C and D, this way, which means the K and the water. Good. Now, let's do a mass balance globally in all the equipment. Hopefully you know, or if you don't know, let's do our system. Recycle is never included. We actually just have inlet of F, outlet of U, and outlet of P. Yeah, that, uh, which is here. F equals Q plus P, C, and P, S. And the same balance, but now we're going to do the balance in K, which is exactly the same, just add the X's, which means composition of X. No, composition of K. We have this, yes. This is common sense, it's water, you cannot have dissolving water, so it is zero. This is solid, so it's good. And this is the solution. Now, we're going to substitute one in two, which is this here, it's going to come here, which is exactly what I am doing, 1500, this is this. PC is here, this Strange number comes from here, and PD I'm telling you is this. So we just insert this here and solve. Let me just yeah, do this. We have this and zero and here and here, and PD it's equal to PC. So nice. We just have one equation with one unknown, solve for PC, and you get this value. Good, we have PC. Actually, you could go for more, but let's do this. We are going to substitute 3 in number 1, which is the simple one, it's this one. So substitute this, and you will get now the value of PD. Nice. Now, we need to find water, and it is actually easy. We now know P. P is the product, the general thing that is going out is the solution, a solution plus a solid. So we add these two, we add F, we don't have Q, but we do have PS and PD, remember P, S, P, D, and P, S, I think, yes, no, sorry, sorry, yes. 
PC plus PD will give you the solution. So we have this number, we have this number, and we have this number. We just got to look for Q, which is water. And we have it right here. Nice. Now, let's do the mass balance in the units just to see what else can we get. Hopefully we get compositions. So we do a mass balance in the crystallizer. Let me go back. Sorry about changing a lot, but it helps. So you can see, this is the crystallizer. FC is entering, R is going out, and PC and PS it's going out too. Mass balance, which is here. Nice. Now, we know these two guys, it's 1550. So we have this equation. Let's name it 5. And we do the mass balance over W, which is water, in the crystallizer, of course, because we're watching the crystallizer. Just remember to add these X waters here. You know this one, you know this one, you know. Yeah, actually, you just know the. Uh, we know PD, we know FC. No, FC, we don't know it. Recycle, we don't know it. Good. We are left with this equation mathematically. Because once you do math, you will know you have only two variables, and you have two variables here, but we have two equations, 5 and 6. And the variables are F's, the feed in the crystallizer and the recycle. Let's continue. Let's solve it. We're going to solve for R, and then, actually from R you could check the feed in C, but we, I don't know why I didn't put it. Should be very easy. So guys, just know that you could find, once you have this, let me show you which number you need to substitute. You substitute in 6, please, because you already have the value of R. Or actually you could substitute here, it's also easy. FC will be the recycle plus this, which is about 6, 7, 10, something like that. You check it. And now we're going to do a mass balance in the mixture. It's simple. Let me go back. Sorry again. Mixture is here. Enters F, outlet. Oh, no. enters F and R. You can see the arrows going in, and it outlets as Fe, feed of the evaporator, which we have here. Nice. We have F1, F1. We have recycle. We only need to look for Fe, which is this. So, we're not at last, we have almost everything. Now, I do recommend to check what are you being asked, because you don't need compositions. So why do you waste time looking for compositions? Maybe if you're in an exam, you don't have that much time. Just check, you don't need compositions, you just need flows. The flow of water, we have it. The flow of the solids, we have it. The flow of the entering now the feed in the evaporator, the one I just showed you here before, and the feed we just calculated here of the crystallizer. Now, we have the recirculation, yes. We have the feed, yes. We can do all math, so we just solve that the recycle ratio is 1.25. And this is part 3. What happens if there's no recycle? You will lose all the crystals in the solution. So, if you have this separator, you are, have this solution, which has certain amount of K, and you have solid K. This one is okay, because you just pack it, some package, and you sell it. But if we just throw this, well, it will not be cool, because we're losing K in the form of solution. It's hidden. So the best thing to do will be to recycle 100%. But maybe the process is not able to recycle 100%. That's why they only recycle, I think, 95%. So make sure, guys, you understand the problem. We already answer all the flows. You must solve for the flows. You just check them. What else? The recycle ratio is very important. The bigger R in F is, for example, uh, here, the bigger means you are recycling, recycling a lot. So this depends a lot of the process, a lot of the products, what do you want, etc. But in general, a good 
recycle ratio will be something about that 120 to 180 but I'm telling you, you need to know the process. Maybe they tell you 5,000 times the recycle, which is crazy, but maybe it works. And if it works and makes money, it's fine. And finally, guys, if you need more exer exercises of bypass and recycle, just go to this web page and you will find a lot of courses, hopefully. And what else? Yeah, just go to the mass balance course and if you need problem solve it, the, here are the problems solved. You can have, I think it's about four problems for this chapter, which are mass balance with recycle, mass balance with bypass, etc. Nice. So in the next video, we're going to make a break. We're going to see what we have seen before and what are we going to see later. So. See you in the next video.